once I accept myself the way God accepts me, not the way the world will define acceptance. The world's definition of acceptance is, hey, I accept you good. I accept you all the bad. You can be as bad as you want. You're still my friend. You can be as good as you want. You still my... That's not God's definition of acceptance. God's definition of acceptance is, I accept you for who you are completely, but I want to change the bad. I want to, first of all, I want you to come to me to repent of the bad. I want to forgive the bad. And then I want to turn your whole life around so that you can be an effective minister of the gospel. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have Dr. Vonnie Marshall back on the podcast. Along with being a cognitive therapist with a doctorate in counseling and a master's in psychology, she is an evangelist and missionary with a passion to help people. Dr. Vonnie Marshall offers a number of courses online for counseling and psychology if you would like to dive deeper on these subjects and learn skills to help others. You can find them at pathwayusa.info. In this episode, Dr. Marshall talks about the three ingredients of genuine spiritual growth and emotional health why grace is the foundation for all change, how truth sets limits for us, and much more. Well, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so grateful to have you back on the show today, Sister Marshall. Thank you, Greg. It's so wonderful to be back on a Hacker Podcast. Wouldn't believe how many people write to me and comment uh, through your podcast on uh, so many things they share with me. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, I've been trying to behind the scenes talk you into starting your own podcast, so then you can yes. you can post stuff whenever you like instead of having to coordinate with me. But hey, I'm grateful that you're continuing to come back here and share your wisdom. So grateful that that you've chosen this platform to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I want to collaborate with Hacker Podcast. Uh, I don't need any other podcast. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is the first part of a three-part series where we're going to be talking about changes that, that we can make. Uh, when I say we, I mean more so you, and then I'll be uh, reacting to it, to what you're discussing here today. But um, changes that we can make that can uh, benefit our relationships, make our life better. So would you mind, uh, as you've done in the past, Dr. Marshall, just setting the platform for what we're going to be discussing today? You know, um, we are all relational people. We, we are created by God to have relationships because God himself wants a relationship with us. So he made us relational. But in a relationship, there's so much going on, right? There's there's personalities, there's different temperaments. Uh, we need to be able to get along with people, and sometimes we don't, and sometimes we do. Well, the thing is, uh, what I would like to talk to you today about is that if, if we are having struggles in relationships, struggles not only with other people, but struggles within ourselves, struggle even relating to God, struggles relating to our spouse, our children, our parents, and just generally anybody, um, we can make certain changes in our lives. Mm. And these changes I'm going to uh, talk about in a three-part series. This is, of course, part one. And then um, and, and Hacker Podcast would have part two and three going forward. When we make these changes and we stick to these changes, and these changes are not impossible. They're not changes that are so hard you cannot make them. They are possible changes. These are changes that you can make, and um, you you can you can actually have a better relationship with God, with yourself. With you can have a relation. You can have wonderful relationships with people around you, uh, whether they want a good relationship or not. You could be at peace if you make these changes. Right. And so yes, that's that's really uh, what what the podcast, what the three-part series is going to be about. We're going to focus on improving our environment, our relationship by making changes that can be healing to us. Mm. And so where do we start? What are, what are some of the changes that, that we can make? I mean, do we have to do something first before we start making any change? Where, where should we start? Okay. First of all, we need to actually have a good idea of our environment because changes... Uh, can either be good or hindered because of our environment. Mm. Now, 
in order to uh, have a good environment. Now, what I mean by good environment, some people say, what is your definition of good environment? Well, any environment that promotes growth is mm. a good environment. It's as simple as that. Okay. Any environment that produces emotional or results in emotional, mental uh, growth, improvement, it's a good environment. You can trust that environment. Mm. So in order for you to um, make sure that you are in an environment of growth, you've got to make sure that there are three ingredients. The three ingredients are grace, mm -hmm. truth, and time. Grace, truth, and time. Real change and real growth um, happens only in the context of grace, truth, and time. Okay, well, what is grace? Let me just go into that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, Greg, of course. Yeah. Okay. yeah, unpack it for us. Okay, grace is, what is grace? I mean, I think that most of us who understand the Word of God, we know the basic biblical definition of grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God towards his people. If God can give me favor, why is it that I don't give myself favor? Mm. If God can accept me with all, all of my failings and idiosyncrasies and not knowing technology like Greg <laughs> and all of that, why cannot I accept myself? Mm. Why is it I'm so hard on myself? When God is not hard on me, that's grace. And mm. if we can accept ourselves, stop being hard on yourself. Now, I'm not saying don't, ex I'm not saying um, excuse sinful behavior. No, 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 no. Right. That's not what I mean by not being hard on you. No, if you're sinning, well, simple, simply put, stop. Please stop. <laughs> you know, go to God and say, I am sinning. Help me to stop and he'll help you. <laughs> The thing is, though, grace, what is grace? It's the unmerited favor of God towards his people. Grace is also unconditional love and acceptance. So I need to have unmerited favor towards myself because God does. Mm -hmm. I'm not better than God, surely. And grace is unconditional love and acceptance. I'm not better than God. So why is it I don't accept me? Hmm. Why is it that I'm always looking for a higher standard than God's standard? God's yeah. standard is, I know you are weak. I know you're going to make mistakes. I know you're going to have bad days and bad attitudes and bad move. And you're going to, you're going to fail sometimes. You're going to fall. You're going to fall off the wagon sometimes. But I love you. And as long as you continue to desire me, I'm going to help you. I have unconditional love and acceptance of you. And yet, that's God's standards, right? But mm. you know what we do? We want to put our standards above God's standards. Oh, my goodness. When my righteousness is above God's righteousness, it's as filthy rags, the Bible says. Hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, it's a concept of disgrace. You know, when you put yourself outside of God's grace and, and you can't accept it. And that's that's when you definitely oh, can't move forward. Great. Wow. Did you just say it's a concept of out of graces? Did, can I quote you? I'm going to add that in my <laughs> notes right now. But that is that is absolutely true. If, if I don't show myself grace, I think that I must be a disgrace because I'm telling God, oh, yeah, I know. I know, God, you love me. Thanks. But I don't really love me. Mm. And God's like, I, God's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am holy. I'm pure. I'm God. And I love you. You're not holy and you don't love you. Wait a minute. That means your standard of loving yourself and accepting yourself has now suddenly superseded mine. Your standard is higher than mine. Do you know how many times I have heard people uh, beg God to forgive them? Hmm. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us to beg God to forgive us. The Bible just says very simply in 1 John 7. Oh, isn't it great that we have scripture to correct mm. our human perception? I mean, we have the, all these perceptions and the scripture says, I didn't say that. I didn't say, don't add. Don't yeah. add. Uh, Eve, I didn't say that, Eve. Don't add. Okay. So the scripture says this. The scripture says, if you say that you don't, if you say that you don't have sin, then, you know, well, then you're lying. Right. Because you're a person. Okay. Mm -hmm. But 
but if you confess your sins to God, he is just and faithful to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. First John 7. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so it doesn't say beg God. Oh, God, please, please, please forgive me. Wait a minute. I forgave you when you first asked me to forgive you 45 minutes ago. I forgave yeah. you then. But 45 minutes into this conversation with me, you're still begging me to forgive you just because you don't feel forgiven. A lot of people wait for the feeling of forgiveness rather than accept that forgiveness is a fact, not a feeling. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Forgiveness yeah, is a fact. Forgiveness. Yeah. God has already said, hey, did you make a mistake, Vani? Yes. You sinned? Yes. Well. Confess your sins. I've sinned, God. This is what I did. I don't even, even go into details. He's, he was there when I sinned. I don't have to even explain details to him because he was he's God's spirit. He was there when I sinned. He's in my mind. He's in my spirit. He's in my environment. He saw it already. Nothing mm. surprises him. So I'm like, yes, God, I sinned. Okay. Well, what do you want to do about it? Well, I want you to forgive me. Okay. You're forgiven. Now, what do you want to do about it? Well, I receive your forgiveness. Good. Now get up and dust yourself over the, you know, the whatever dust or debris you have and keep moving forward towards me. Keep moving forward to do what I want you to do. Mm. Don't be stuck in your sin as if sin obliterates my grace. Your sin cannot get rid of my grace. My grace is so powerful, so big, it cannot be obliterated or ruined or destroyed by whatever sin you can come up with. Come up with a sin. Please don't, but you know. <laughs> I worshipped idols, Greg. Among the Ten Commandments, that was one of the first. Thou shalt not worship any other god. Okay. I mean, I broke the Ten Commandments. I deserved, according to Scripture, I deserved hell. I, I did. I was, I was an mm. idol worshiper. But when I came out of that, all I did, I didn't beg God to forgive me. I, did, I really didn't. All I went was I went towards him and I said, I, I was, I'm an idol worship. I, I came from a religion of idol worship. And now I want to follow you. And, 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 and please, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And that was it. It was done. Yeah. He filled me with his spirit in an instant. Mm. That's grace. And yet, God gives us that grace. And yet, we don't give ourselves grace. Mm. We don't accept ourselves. And that is the first change. This podcast is about changes we have to make in order to have better relation. The first change you have to make in order for your relationships to get better is that Show yourself grace, unconditional love, and acceptance. Accept who you are. Don't try to pretend to be someone else. Mm. Stop trying to be someone else. God created you uniquely as you are. Yeah, but I don't like me. Well, you know what? Tough luck. Sorry. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to begin to love yourself as the way God loves you. Find out who you are. Mm. I mean, are you, are you black, white, blue, brown? Do you, do you like, uh, what, what colors do you like? What, what kind, what, what things do you, what dreams do you have? Who are you? Mm. And then accept who you are. Love who you are unconditionally because God does. And when you don't, when you stop loving who you are and accepting who you are, then you will continue to try to please other people to love you because you cannot, you don't love yourself. So you will please other people so that they will love you. They will take the place of loving you when you ought to love you. But when you start loving yourself, you wouldn't be bothered about pleasing other people. You won't be a people pleaser. In fact, God is against people pleasing. God said, Hey guys, please me, please me. I'm your God. Don't, don't go around pleasing people because you fall into a trap. Once you start pleasing people, you fall into a trap. You will start doing what they want you to do because you want to be accepted by them. Why do you want to be accepted by other people? Because you don't accept yourself. yourself. Yep. You don't accept yourself.
You think that you're some kind of a bad person, failure, uh, with all kinds of issues, that you need other people's affirmation all the time. You even ask them straight out, do you love me? Mm. And you're like, yeah, really? Yeah, why? Oh, I, I love you. You're, you're, I love you. First of all, I'm commanded to love you. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm commanded to love you. And God put love in my heart for you. For, secondly, I really like you. I mean, I think you're cool and you're wonderful. And they keep needing and craving for that affirmation. But once you show yourself grace, you stop craving for other people's aff you become you 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 don't you're not affirmation addicted you're not approval mm. addicted mm. yeah and you're what you're talking about you're talking about the foundation this is the very foundation if you're going to make any change because i i can hear like the i can hear the argument from the other end is like if you just accept yourself then you'll never change but what you're talking about is this is the this is the very foundation if you're going to make any changes first you have to start with accepting who you are and, and giving yourself grace. Is that right? Right. Because if you don't accept who you are, e even the bad, I mean, I mean, we're all good and bad. I know mm -hmm. I'm good and bad, but the thing is I have to accept who I am, the total package, not just accept my good. I have to, ex I have to, ex well, let me, let me rephrase that. I have to accept the good, but I have to accept the fact that there's also weaknesses in me. Paul did. Paul mm -hmm. went to God and said, I am weak, but I rejoice in my weakness. My goodness, that is major acceptance. He, yeah. in front of God, I mean, he was the great, he was the, I mean, uh, he was not the chief apostle, Peter was, but he was the great apostle, Paul. Why do they call him that? Because they know most of the epistles are attributed to mm him. -hmm. And he was like, God, I am, I am weak. But I am not going to wallow in my weakness. I'm not going to sit here having a pity party. Oh, I'm weak. God don't love me. Nobody loves me. You know, uh, it, it, uh, you know, uh, nobody loves me. My, my family don't love me. And I'm just a loser. No, what he said was, I am weak. But I rejoice in it. Because in my weakness, I see your strength. I see my need of you. Mm -hmm. Paul celebrated the fact that we need God. That's why yeah. he celebrated his weakness. Mm. Yes, now, did he, did, was he saying, hey, I've got a bunch of weaknesses. I'm just going to stay in that weakness and not get better. No, he didn't say that. He just said, right now I have weaknesses. I hope God helps me with my weaknesses. Of, uh, say, for example, my weakness is, I don't know, uh, gossip. Say gossip is one of my weaknesses and, and um, um, getting angry and impatient is one of my weaknesses. Oh, do I stay? In the, no, please don't. Don't mm. gossip. Please, please don't always be irritable and irritated and slam doors and get mad at people. Uh, get better. But at the same time, admit that you are weak to God. Admit the fact that you have weaknesses. Don't You're not rejoicing in your weakness. You're rejoicing in the fact that because of my weakness, I need you, God. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I need you. So what do I accept? Going back to the word acceptance, I accept the good parts of me, and I accept the fact that I have weaknesses, <laughs> major ones, major weaknesses, yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess uh, part of that is also accepting the fact that you need to change, that change needs to take place. You know, I, I think um, there's a couple of things that's, that's came to my attention as you're talking about that you're talking about Paul how he acknowledged his weakness but then later he said I press towards the mark so he, he there was an acknowledgement of weakness but he continued and strived to get better he was pressing towards something towards a goal Ex and excellent excellent Greg that you brought that up actually that's in my notes right now but you brought it up and exactly he says hey God I I uh rejoice not in my weakness but I I I I Rejoice in the fact that I lean on you because of my weakness, but then I press towards. I am going to get better. I'm going to get better. But at the same time, in my journey to get better, I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate the fact that I need you. Because if I was mm. perfect, God, if I was perfect and I didn't have any issues or problems, if I didn't have any sin, I wouldn't need you. I wouldn't need the death on the cross. 
and the resurrection three days later. Mm. I wouldn't need any of that. I wouldn't need, I wouldn't need it, but I need you, God, because the the whole point of creating an environment of growth, and it almost seems like a contradiction in terms, but creating an environment of growth starts with acceptance of yourself. Acceptance of yourself includes grace towards you. It includes pressing towards the mark to make changes. But actually pressing towards the mark is the next uh, ingredient. Remember I said there were three ingredients, grace, truth, and time. Mm. Yeah. So gr grace is the foundation upon which all healing of the human spirit rests. Healing, uh, healing is, does not rest on truth. Now I'm, I'm going to get there now. Don't, you know, <laughs> hold your breath. Grace is the foundation upon which all healing of the human spirit rests. And by the way, I want to add this. Grace is not an excuse to sin. Please, listeners of the Hacker Podcast, grace is not an excuse to sin. Grace is the opportunity to rely totally on God for our weaknesses. Grace is where we love ourselves and accept ourselves and accept the good and the bad so that God can, God can heal the bad and affirm the good and strengthen the good. Mm. That is grace. Grace opens the door to transparency. If I love myself, if I accept the fact that there are some good parts of me, but there are also some parts. Mm -mm, God's not pleased. There are some bad parts of me. You know what? If once I accept who I am, good and bad, then I will feel safe enough to be transparent to, to, to a pastor, to a counselor, to a friend, first of all, to God. Mm. I won't try to hide and pretend to be somebody else because I accept me. I accept who I am. So I'll, I, I will have the opportunity. In fact, I will be more transparent. I would feel more brave to be transparent in that someone knows that the real me. Mm. Someone knows the real me. And someone loves me anyway. Oh, you know, God. I will never understand why God loves Vani, but I'm so glad God does because I have bad in me, Greg, and I have some good in me and some, well, when I say good, uh, Jesus said, no, nobody's good, but God, but I have some positives in me and I have a bunch of negatives in me, but God loves me unconditionally, accepts me and provides me unmerited favor. And because of that, I know that there, that, 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 uh, someone knows the real me and loves me anyway. Once I, uh, once I have the mindset of I accept me the way God accepts me. You know how God expect, accepts me? He doesn't excuse me. Mm. God's acceptance is not God's excusing. God's acceptance is not I excuse the bad. I love your good, but I excuse the bad. No, no. God's acceptance is. I am, this is, this is your positive parts of you. Now, the negative parts of you, if you would trust me, I want to change that so you can affect the world. Mm. That you could be a good witness. Your, 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 your habits that are not godly, I want to, give me a chance to change. Mm. Yeah. Come to me. Depend on me. Rely on me. And so, once I accept myself the way God accepts me, not the way the world will define acceptance. The world's definition of acceptance is, hey, I accept you good. I accept you all the bad. You can be as bad as you want. You're still my friend. You can be as good as you want. You still my... That's not God's definition of acceptance. God's definition of acceptance is, I accept you for who you are completely, but I want to change the bad. I want to, first of all, I want you to come to me to repent of the bad. I want to forgive the bad. And then I want to turn your whole life around so that you can be an effective minister of the gospel. Yeah. I, I was just going to add to that, that, that um, the world's acceptance is, as you said there, you said, uh, you highlighted that, you know, God's acceptance 
uh, works towards change, whereas the world's acceptance is you don't need to change. Be who you are. And in fact, you just need to accept who you are to a greater degree and don't change. This is the most important, well, not the most important, but this is one of the most important uh, points I want to make at this particular podcast is God's acceptance of me is very different, differently defined uh, compared to the world's acceptance. The world's acceptance is if I am a, if I am a gossip, if I am a, 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 an angry person that hurts people and uh, the, the, the world's definition of acceptance is you can stay the way you are and we will still accept you to each his own. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but God's acceptance is not to each his own. God's acceptance is, I love you for your your entirety. I love you whether you are, whether you're good or bad, I love you. But I want to change the bad. I want to mm-hmm. change the bad so that you become more like me. Yeah. God's acceptance is, I want to put you on a journey. Both you're good and bad, right? You're Vani, yeah. you're good and bad. You've got, you've got good stuff in you and you've got a bunch of bad stuff, but I want to put you on a journey so that you become more like me. God's ex- uh, acceptance definition or definition of acceptance is I accept you because I know that you need my unconditional love so that you will walk with me so that I can make you more like me. I am not going to, God's acceptance is I'm not going to give you an excuse to stay the way you are. Because if you stay the way you are, you're not going to be a light. You're not going to be a light, a a city set on a hill. You're not going to be a light, uh, you know, that is, that is illuminating the world. You're going to be a light under a bushel. You're going to be hidden. You're Mm. you're not going to, you're not going to be like me. Mm. Now. The second aspect is truth. Now, now we know why we need three, 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 uh, three episodes of this podcast. <laughs> but the the second part, the first part is grace. You change your environment of growth by loving yourself the way God loves you, not the way the world loves you. If you love yourself the way the world loves you, you will give yourself all kinds of ridiculous excuses to do what you want to do and be what you want to be and harm people, harm yourself and act like, sorry to say this, but you act like the devil because the world is not going to give you the parameters of behavior, but God does. Mm. So you have to love yourself, accept yourself the way God loves you and accepts you. Very, very important. Highlight, highlight the way God loves you and accepts you. Second, the second part of changing your environment of growth is truth. Truth sets limits on bad behavior. You know, when you said, Paul went to God, uh, well, you know, he was talking to God and he said, oh, you know, I, I am weak, but you are strong. I rejoice in my weakness because in my weakness, I see that you are the strong ones. I can lean on you. But then he didn't stop there. He said, I persevere towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. That means he's, he is walking in that journey. That's truth. Mm-hmm. That's when truth sets in. You know, it, it's, it's, we almost feel that grace, truth, and time are linear. They're not linear. They're, they actually work together. Mm. They are kind of mixed together, you know. So truth, truth is this. Truth sets limits. That's what truth does. It sets limits. You can do this. You cannot do that. And all the while, all the while, while Jesus was giving truth to the people, He was also saying, I love you unconditionally. Mm. You need to do this. You need to stop doing that. But I still love you unconditionally, whether you do this or that. I still love you because I need you to to understand that my love for you is unconditional. I accept. I accept that you are you are both this Mm. and that I am going to accept you. But. I'm going to now give you parameters. I'm going to now build a fence around you. All this while, you had the freedom of grace. Now, the Father builds a fence around us. Truth points us to correct behavior. That's why Paul, after telling God, Oh my goodness, I'm so weak. There's so many weaknesses in me. I rejoice in my weakness. And uh, I lean on you. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and I, and I trust you 
because you're strong. I see your strength through my weakness, but at the same time, truth sets in. Truth immediately sets in and says, okay, Paul, so what are you going to do? You're going to just lean on me? You're just going to rejoice in your weakness? What are you going to do about your weakness? Well, I'm going to make sure I find out what God's fences are. What is God's parameters? What are God's limits for me so that I can get my life together? Mm. This is the, this is another change that we have to make. Our, our podcast is about changes that we need to make in order our relationships are better. We need to, the first thing that we need to do when our, to make our relationships better is to love ourselves, accept ourselves so that we are not, we don't fall prey to other people's uh, people pleasing attitudes and other people's manipulation and other people's uh, control. We love ourselves and accept ourselves the way God did, not the way the world. The second thing is we walk in truth. Grace I, is... I think, gra- I, go I ahead. think this, uh, before you dive into that further, I, I think this discussion is so important right now, especially because of uh, the redefinition of love in society as well. Uh-huh. It's like, uh, if you're talking to my generation, when when you say that you love somebody or that someone loves you, you can't expect change. That's the way society views it now. And it's like, and if you are asking for change, then you're just manipulating them or you don't actually love them. But what it is, is it's just a redefinition of love. They're redefining what it is when an actual fact, true love is accepting someone for where they are, but also, as you said, providing those parameters, like, like a parent with their child. You know, you accept your child for who they are, but you're also trying, you're setting parameters. Okay, you, you don't do this. You do do this. This is how you grow. This is how you mature. Greg, you have two beautiful daughters that I have been privileged to meet and, and talk to. And I know you're a good father because I've seen your interaction with them and Steph and everyone. Greg, how would I even believe that you are a good father if you allowed your beautiful, precious daughters to do whatever they liked, even to their detriment. Mm. If, if I saw, if, if I heard or saw you say to them, oh, I love you all so much, do whatever you want, knock yourself out, you know, even if it hurts you, even if, if it's sin, don't worry about it. Dad will still love you and you don't set any parameters. You don't set any fences. You don't try to protect them from themselves and protect them from the world. How would that make you a good father? It would make you the worst kind of father. But because mm. I know you're a good dad, you have, I've seen you say to them, no, you're not going to, no, we're not going to go there. I've heard, mm. I've heard, <laughs> I've lived in that. I'm not trying to eavesdrop, but I've heard, <laughs> you, I've heard you. No, no, we're not going to do that. No, no, you've got to, no, you've got to eat your dinner. No, come on. This is, this is n- dinner time. No, you've got to do that. No, no, we're not, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to talk like that. No, you're not going to hit your, you're not going to, you know. And so you have, you have put limits on your daughter's behaviors. Why? Why, Greg? You're not, you're not God. I'm not God. You're a human father. And if a human father (laughs) would put limits on their children's behavior, I don't understand why we won't accept God's limits on our behavior. And so grace and truth work together. Grace is, as I said, it, it, it is a door to transparency that someone really loves me. Even if I fail and fall and make a fool of myself and I mess everything up, someone loves, God loves me. And, and, and after God, I'm sorry to say this, don't look for another person to love you. After God, you love you. You love you. God. Who loves, who loves me? Jesus. And then who loves me? Bonnie. Bonnie loves me. Bonnie accepts me. I'm not perfect. And the imperfections, I want God to change it with truth, with Mm. guidance, and put me on the right path so that he points me to correct behavior. But meanwhile, this is who I am. And, And... I I don't accept the bad. I mean, sorry, I accept who I am, but I don't, um, I don't live in a world where I'm trying to please other people. You see, if we don't make those changes of grace and truth in our lives, we will begin, as I said earlier, we will just be people pleasers. We will accept 
people to put the perimeters in our life, people to build a fence rather than God's fences. I don't trust in anybody's fences, but God's fences. God's perimeters are safe and just and clean. People's fences might not be, not everybody, but you know, some people's fences might be based on some personal agenda. Mm. You can't do this because maybe they're controlling and you, you cannot live like this. You, you, you cannot do this. You cannot look like this because I, I have a personal agenda on, on your behavior. You have to behave like this because I want, no, I want to behave the way God wants me to behave. Truth is structure. Grace is acceptance and the foundation of all healing. Grace is self-acceptance through God's, through God's lens, not through the lens of, the, of a liberal world. No way. Mm. The lens of the liberal world would tell me that everything is cool. Everything is fine. And like you said, if, if I love you, like you said, the liberal world says, well, if you love me, you have to accept whatever I am and whoever I am, even if it sounds confusing and, uh, and, and weird. And uh, I, I'm going to, I expect you to accept me for everything. If you love, that's not real love. That's not love. Actually, that's destructive. Mm. Yes. That's destructive because that, that is not even love. So the world's definition of love has been totally um, misapplied, misunderstood, and uh, mischaracterized. God's definition of love is, yeah, of course I love you. But if you think that I'm going to leave you to your own devices for your own detriment and your self-harm, you got not, not, another thing coming, buddy. Mm. I'm not going to leave you to your own devices and your own detriment. I'm going to do everything in my power, as long as you trust me and walk with me, I'm going to do everything in my power to effect change in your life. I'm going to do everything in, your, in my power to cause you to become like me. Mm. You see, God's yeah. agenda has always been not so much heaven. Heaven is, is not my goal. Heaven is my destination. I'm going to end up in heaven anyway, provided I become like him. Mm. My goal is to become like Jesus Christ. My destination is heaven. That's good. Yes. My goal is not heaven. My, if my heaven is just, if my goal is just heaven, then I will forget, then I will just be so heaven minded. I won't be Christ minded. I, I won't want to, I, I will, I won't strive towards becoming like Jesus Christ. I will just say, well, whatever they can get me heaven. No, 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 no. Your, your goal is to become like Christ so that your destiny is heaven. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you're so heaven minded, uh, why would you waste time interacting with other people that can Seriously? cause you to make mistakes or to have burdens or, or whatnot? But, but Christ, that was his intention is his intention was to affect people to help people to you know, Greg, change. If anybody had the right to be totally heaven minded, it was Jesus Christ. He came from there. So, you know, I, you know, he must have missed his, missed the, the throne that he left to incarnate himself as the, as, as, as the Christ, the father incarnating it as human to come. But, but he, when he was on earth, that's it. He focused on earth. Did mm. he have thoughts of heaven? Sure. He prayed. Did he have thoughts of the glory beyond? Yes, but he was focused on earth. He said, these people that you've given to me in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed that you've given me these people. I pray for their salvation. I want them to be one as, as we are one. That means I want us to be united in that, in that kingdom quest. Mm. But he, you know, Yes, uh, we, we are to be heaven-minded. Our goal is to become like Jesus Christ. And for that, we need grace. Jesus accepted himself. He knew he is the Father incarnate. He accepted himself. It, to say, well, did he love himself? Yeah, he, he knew who he was. He didn't hate himself. 
He loved himself, loved his mission, appreciated and respected who he was and why he was there. And then, But then he also had parameters. This is the truth. This is the way I'm going to walk. That's why he told Peter, Peter, you're not going to distract me from the truth. There will mm. always be people in your life that will distract you. There will always be a Peter. Yeah. And it will distract you from the truth. Hey, you don't have to well, do that. That's horrible. The, 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 a perfect example of this, and I'm, I'm not sure if you already have this in your notes, which knowing you, you probably do. But um, the, <laughs> you the woman me, who... I, I have a feeling we <laughs> copy each other's notes. Actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, uh, oh. you know, she he showed her grace in, in forgiving her and, and not allowing her to be stoned. But he didn't leave her where she was at. He didn't say, go back to what you want to do. He said, go, sin no more. And this is, you're so right. Uh, how, how wonderful that you brought up that, that example. Grace was when he told her, um, so where are your accusers, woman? And she turns around, she says, well, nobody here. And he says, I don't accuse you either. Mm. I accept the fact that your life is so distraught and your life is so messed up that you believe in God. That's the good part. But then you're an adulterer. You're, you're an adulteress. You were caught in the act of adultery. He didn't say, I know you didn't commit it. He said, no, you commit, you were caught in the act. Mm. So you have, you know, some, some positive aspect of you. You're, you're crying and you're weeping and, and you, you are, you're wanting, you, you, you are ashamed of what you did. All of those are positive aspects because you are contrite. Con Contrition is a positive aspect. But you are caught in the act of adultery. That's bad. But you know what? As your maker, as your father, as your savior, I accept you completely. I don't accept your wrong. I accept you. Mm. Because only I am able to separate you from your wrong. I accept you. I created you. I made you in my image. You look like me. You look like your dad. I'm not going to cast you outside of this, this provision, this, this plan of salvation. I accept you as you are. But because I love you, not the way you define love, now, girl, you've defined love. I mean, I'm not saying he said all this, but when I go into scripture, I'm thinking mm -hmm. if he had a, a conversation, a modern conversation with with her, he would have you define love as whoever, you know, sleeps around with you, whoever that has a sexual relationship with you, that's love. So that must be, you know, well, at least they accept me because because they're having a relationship with me. So they must they must love me. They must no, I am not I don't love that way. By using you, abusing you, causing you to sin and dragging you through mud. I'm gonna show you what love is. I'm holy. You're not. You've made many mistakes. I still love you. But I cannot excuse the mistakes because I love you. I'm not going to let you continue to go back to your house and commit more adultery and get caught again by the same people that wanted to stone you. I'm not going to let that happen. No. This is what I'm going to do to change your life. And this is the change that heals. You know what he did, Greg? And I, I don't mean to get emotional, but it's so big, it's so huge. He looked at her and he said, you've settled, adulterous woman. You've settled, you've settled for second best. You've settled for, well, as long as I can, you know, escape from the stoning, I'll just go back to my old life and hope that next time I'm not caught. You've settled, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you that I know you committed adultery. If anybody has the right to stone you, it's me. None of these men that have carried that stone have the right to stone you because they all have sinned. They're all going to face me in judgment. But 
I have the right to stone you and I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you that I love you. I accept the fact that your life, this is God's acceptance. I accept the fact that your life is majorly messed up. I, that's what I accept. Your life is messed up. I accept the fact that you, your life is miserable. I accept the fact that I don't accept that you commit adultery. No, I accept the fact that you've had to resort to adultery because you didn't love yourself enough to think that you deserve better. I accept that fact that you are stuck and suffering and feeling anxious and feeling, well, when's my next income going to come from? I better sell my body. So I accept that fact, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to condemn you when I, among all the people standing here, I'm the only one that has the right and the power to condemn you, to punish you, but I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to give you truth now. I'm not going to punish you. I love you. I'm not going to throw the stone at you. Grace. Grace. Environment of growth. Grace. Now I'm going to give you truth. The second ingredient in the environment of growth, which is truth. Then he says this. Don't do it again. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that you and I, not you and those men that you have had relationships with or sexual encounters with. Not you and the society that wanted to kill you 10 minutes ago. They wanted to kill you. They wanted to stop. Not even them. Forget them. Forget the men that you've slept around with. Look at me. You can have a relationship with me. And if you want a relationship with me, there are two things, only two things you've got to do. Love yourself the way I love you. Accept yourself the way I accept you. And don't sin again. Go and sin no more. Mm. That's powerful. And it unpacks it unpacks what we've been discussing the last forty or so minutes. It's like the grace is there, the acceptance is there. But as you said so beautifully, I accept you for where you found yourself. I accept you for who you are. But I'm not gonna let you stay there. No. I require change. Yeah. No. I don't wanna follow a savior that will that will let Vani stay where I am. I, I don't then I don't have hope. If he's going to let me stay where I am, I don't have hope for improvement to be better. I don't want to follow a savior like that, but I don't, you see. I follow a savior that says, hey, you can do better. Let me nudge you. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to shove it down your throat, but I'm going to, I'm going to gently in my spirit nudge you. You can do better. You don't have to get so mad every time. Somebody cuts you off in a traffic line. You don't have to have that attitude. You don't have to exaggerate. You don't have to, you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be judgmental. You don't have to do this or that. You could be better. I know mm. because I'm making you more like me. I have such confidence in you, Vani, Greg, whoever. I have such confidence in you that I know that you can be more like me. I know you can. You can be more forgiving today than you were last year. You can be more kinder today than you were yesterday. You can be less gossipy today than you were a month ago. And as long, like I, I think I said this in one particular podcast, as long as I'm becoming more like him, that defines my success in changing my environment so that there are changes that I can make. And the change is, Grace, give myself grace, God's grace, not this cheap grace that the world defines. This cheap grace that the world defines is, oh, you can do whatever you like and we, and we love you. No, God's grace. Understand what's God's, what God's grace is. And then, and then give yourself grace and give yourself truth. Mm. 
if you only give truth, 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 that means it's, it's control, control, uh, uh, and rules, 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 and parameters, parameters, and there's no grace, you won't grow. You won't, you won't trust anyone and you won't heal because you don't accept yourself. You will only feel condemnation. Truth alone. Yes, truth can save. Of course we know that. But truth alone without grace will just make you feel like a failure all the time. If Jesus looked at the adulterous woman and said, oh, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to throw the stone. They're not going to throw it, but I'm qualified. So I'm going to stone you to death right now because you committed adultery. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, that's the law. That's Moses' law. So he takes the stone and he stones her and she dies. There's no story in the Bible of his grace. Mm. Yeah. He says, neither do I condemn you. <laughs> You know how many times I've leaned on that. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. You know, mm -hmm. if I have a personal message to the entire world as, I don't know, as Bonnie Marshall, this is it. This is it. This is it. Mm -hmm. In our next podcast, I'd like to talk to you about the power of time in growth. So that we change the environment of growth through grace, truth, and time. And then I, I want to also, and I know I'm trying to plug in for the next podcast, but the, the next podcast is we cannot grow in isolation. And I want to talk about bonding, how our bonding with, you know, have, have I, have I talked about that before? Bonding with our, when, when our, our history of bonding is unhealthy, our future of bonding is affected. Mm. Yeah. I think I you've think talked I've a little bit about, about relationship, it. but not necessarily in the bonding context. Right. So, so I think so you talked I, a little bit about relationships. Yes. And so that would, that would, we would, we would evolve into that for the following uh, podcast, the, the, you know, um, episode two and three. So I, I, I think I better stop here. It's already <laughs> 50 past minutes. I don't know, 52 minutes. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, this has been fantastic. And I was worried there for a minute for our uh, people who, who love their lists. And, uh, you know, they heard you talk about uh, truth. They heard you talk about grace. And I could just hear my wife in the background saying, what about time? She mentioned time. time. Are we going to cover okay. that? You know, <laughs> so you have I to, talk you have about to come time, back. But I can talk about time right now, but it's such a beautiful. No, I don't want to and rush you on that. Thing. If that if we could if we could save it for the next episode. I apologize to the <laughs> listeners for for not mentioning time, but I think that we got. I felt the spirit of God mm, yeah, in this room and over the podcast. I just felt the spirit of God just affirming to all of us mm. how much we are loved, unconditionally accepted and loved. And yet, yeah. how much he loves us so that he will never, never keep truth away from us. Never. Amen. Well, it's been a blessing to, to have you on. And we look forward to next week as we dive deeper into making changes and, and how that change will affect our relationships yes, and in our life in general. Thank you again, uh, Sister Marshall, for coming on the podcast and for sharing your wisdom with us. Yeah.